Prayer. When you pass over our homes, keep us safe. Be near God, free us to life as your faithful servants, and call us by your name into your loving care. Amen. This is um, Spark Bible, page 78, The Plagues. God gave Moses a big job. Moses had to stand up to a very stubborn king who was making God's people work as slaves. God told Moses to go to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go. But the Pharaoh said, no, I will not let God's people go. Pharaoh wanted the people to worship him, not God. So God used 10 ways called plagues to change Pharaoh's mind. God turned the Nile to blood. The river began to stink. Pharaoh watched the river turn red, knew his people could not drink. And Pharaoh still said no. God sent frogs to hop everywhere, even into the beds. Pharaoh heard his baker scream when frogs jumped out of their beds. And Pharaoh still said no. God thought that gnats might change the Pharaoh's mind so the people could go free. Gnats swarmed people, goats, and cows. There was no place to flee. And the Pharaoh still said no. Flies, thought God, will do the trick. And so God sent a zillion. Pharaoh's house filled up with flies. Outside there were a million. And Pharaoh still said no. God now struck down Pharaoh's herds. The camels all were ill. The donkey's horses all got sick, his cows fell down, but still, and the pharaoh still said no. Oozy, gooey, icky sores on everybody's skin. God knocked and knocked on Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh never let God in, and Pharaoh still said no. Hail pounded, thunder crashed, Pharaoh's plants laid down. Not a tree stood anywhere, all were on the ground, and Pharaoh still said no. Let my people go, said God, or I will send a swarm of locusts to devour what's left, to do your land more harm. And Pharaoh still said no. Now darkness covered Pharaoh's land. The sun did not appear. No one could move. No one could see. Still Pharaoh would not hear. And the Pharaoh still said no. The last and saddest plague of all brought sobs throughout the lands. Parents cried as their children died, Finally, Pharaoh changed his plans. Pharaoh let God's people go. Right, I'd like for you to start today by thinking about your favorite family tradition. What is your favorite family tradition? Just take a minute, go around your car, uh, and think about what your favorite family tradition is. I just want you to hold that in your mind, what your favorite family tradition is. Maybe it's around a holiday uh, or something else. And then now I want you to get out your board games, which should have been in your packet, or you, can, you, you should have been passed one out today. This week, Pastor Sarah and I made you a game called Escape from Egypt. And all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tell you how the game works so that you can take it home and you can play it later as a way to remember what God has done. So everyone in this, in this game starts in Egypt, which has all the pyramids on it. And as you roll the dice, you're going to move around the board. And the first thing you might land on is a plague. And we just heard uh, Emily and Caitlin read about 10 plagues that God sent on Egypt. And as you go around the board, there are 10 different plagues you can land on. Now, you might think that a plague is a bad thing. And in some ways it was. But for us, a plague is how God helps set God's people free. 
And so if you land on a plague, you get to move forward one space because that's how God used, that's what God used to, uh, to help set God's people free. Now, if you keep moving around the board, the next space you could land on is a guard. And if you land on a guard, that means you are trying to escape Egypt, but you got caught. And to get out of a guard, you have to free yourself by either saying a Bible verse or a prayer or singing a song. And if you can't do those things, you get skipped on your next turn. The last thing you can land on says, Pharaoh says no. Because every time God sent a plague to Egypt... Uh, God sent Moses back to the Pharaoh and said, now will you let my people go? And every time Pharaoh said no. And if Pharaoh says no, you have to move backwards the number of spaces that it says until you get all the way around the board. There's a physical challenge in here for you too. As you get closer to the end, there is a space called the Passover. And that is the last plague God sent uh, to the people of Egypt that killed the firstborn son of the Egyptians. And if you land on a Passover, that is the way that we remember what God has done. And that in the Passover time, the people of Israel ate a meal fast, they ate bread, and they marked their, their doorposts so that angel would pass over. So if you land on Passover, you have something to do. You have to eat a cracker. That's any cracker in your house. You have to eat a cracker, and then you have to touch every door that goes out of your house. And if you do that, you have done the Passover space. And finally, what happened at the Red Sea? God, Pharaoh said yes. God's people got to the Red Sea and were led to freedom. So if you get to the Red Sea, you have to stay on that spot until you roll a six. And when you roll a six, you say, it is because of what the Lord did for me, which is what the people said once they crossed the Red Sea. They remembered what God did for them. So that's why I wanted you to think about what your favorite tradition was. Because in the church, we have a lot of traditions too. We have a lot of ways that we remember what God does for us. In fact, some of your favorite traditions might be, might be church traditions, things around Easter or Christmas or things like that. One of the traditions that we do every week is we have communion. And so traditions are a really neat way to remember. Even in the middle of chaos, even in the middle of things that make us really sad and really scared, traditions help us remember. And this game is another neat way to help us remember. Remember what God has done to us. Remember the ways that God sets us free. So have fun playing this game at home this week. Uh, play it with parents. Talk about what God has done for you and have some fun. So this game is in your faith development kits if you pick those up today. If you um, did not and want an extra copy of this, we have extra copies available. Um, so we hope you play and have fun and learn and retell this story over and over again of how God continues to set us free. I'm going to ask the messengers to come on up now. We're going to learn a new song. Everyone else can get out of their car into the adjacent parking space. This song is called Pharaoh, Pharaoh. It's an old camp favorite of mine. And maybe some of you guys know it from camp too. And I'm going to teach you the motions um, once everybody gets out and gets up here. I see some people doing the motions already. It is too much fun to not walk like an Egyptian, isn't it? All right. So to do Pharaoh, Pharaoh, you have to get a little Egyptian, and it goes like this. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. So let me see your Egyptians. Get it good. Get it going. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Then we go, oh, baby, let my people go. And then we go, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then they do it again. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, that is the chorus. For the verses, all we're going to do is clap, and the pattern is three claps and a double clap. So it goes like this. And if you mess up the clapping, that's okay. Nobody's going to notice anyway. Let's sing Pharaoh, Pharaoh. I want you to sing with me on the chorus. If you know the verses, you are welcome to sing along. If you don't know, you can listen to me sing while you clap. It goes like this. Now the song 
goes like this. Well, a burning bush told me just the other day that I should come over here and say, gotta get my people out of Pharaoh's hand and lead them all to the promised land. I said, a Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, baby, let my people go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. singing.